If you're following pop culture, entertainment, things like that, I'm sure you know Meghan and Harry make the news all the time. I cover them once in a while when I feel something is worth covering. Just recently, Meghan and Harry had a car chase, which was pretty much just paparazzis behind them taking pictures, and I skipped that one. There wasn't too much to say about it and other stuff was going on, but this one here I figured I'd cover. It's from The Economist. It's called Prince Harry Complains Again, this time in court from June 7th, 2023. Anytime something goes to court, I think it's worth a cover. Here we go. And by the way, I want to get some stuff on Twitter as much as this article, but let's just use this as a starting point. The word complaint is a standard piece of legal jargon. And in the case of HRH, Duke of Sussex, and Mirror Group Newspapers Limited, which began in the high court this week, the word rang out again and again as Prince Harry was questioned by the Mirror's barrister on what are you complaining about and the article about which you complain and generally your complaint as the day wore on. It started to feel less dreary legal than uncomfortably apposite. Never complain, never explain, was said to the late Queen's unofficial motto. It also appears to be Prince Harry's, except that he has changed never to perpetually. To add to Harry complaining on film, streaming now on Netflix, and Harry complaining in print, now Britain can enjoy the spectacle of Prince Harry complaining in court, available if you can get a seat. I'm pretty sure they refer to his book Spare, which gave out some details about his private life, his family, things like that. I kind of find it distasteful, honestly. This week, the case opened in the royal courts in London. The last royal to appear in court was Princess Anne for an attack by her dog Dottie in 2002. So, talking about over 20 years now. The last time one was questioned was when the future Edward VII appeared in trial about, among other things, Baccarat in 1891. So... Goes without saying, 1891 was a pretty long time ago for a royal to be in court. But okay, I don't have the huge details on the court right now. I'll be following it as things come up. But I want to see what's going on on Twitter, because obviously Harry's trending. Here you could see, right in the middle someplace there, Prince Harry has gone mad. So I guess people are thinking he's just lost it, which could be possible. I mean... Just because he's this big famous person doesn't mean he can't just lose his mind at some point and not be able to take it, not be able to function. This first tweet here does make you think a little bit about the hashtag and how it could be correct. So, Harry says that he was hacked on a daily basis for over 15 years. But he admits, of course, he's got no evidence for that. What's evidence for that? Well, you could take screenshots... You could bring your phone into the services, get a record recorded of it as you go through those years. You don't have to go every day, but if you went once a year, even once every two years, even a couple of times, you'd have some kind of evidence. You can't get the code. You can't get evidence from the other side, but you could get evidence on your side what you think's going on. So the hashtag Harry has gone mad makes a little more sense when you hear that kind of thing, because if you think your phone's been hacked for 15 years every day, that's not quite right. That's not quite sane. It's just not possible. I mean, it's theoretically possible, but incredibly unlikely. They say that Harry mentioned an ex in court quite a bit, which is maybe because if he claims this has been going on for years, he would have been with her at some of those times, so I'm on the fence with that. And this one says he's not over you, Chelsea. More about his ex. Well, if I get more details about what he specifically said about her, maybe I'll change my tune. But probably my gut instinct is he mentioned her because that was the time period they were talking about with these events and she was there at the time. And once again, more about Harry's ex. And once again, more about Harry's ex. And once again, more about Harry's ex. Much of this seems to be centered around Chelsea. I doubt he got her permission to bring her back to the spotlight after so many years. Now there are articles and interest on her life, husband and baby. He has no problem with this intrusion into other people's lives. Which is a pretty good point too. I mean, on one hand, if he's gotta say things in his favor legally and she was there at the time and she's involved i i guess he did what he had to do but it might have been better 
to keep it as subtle as possible, maybe ask the court if he could mention her name behind the scenes and in public, say his ex or something. I don't know. I kind of see a catch-22 for him there. This person claims Harry's caught lying already in court, which is something we're pretty used to here on this channel with news we get. Anyway, the thread goes down and down and down. Looks like this here is just starting. I'll cover it when something comes up, if there's actual serious court details and stuff like that. Let me know what you think down below. If you don't subscribe here, I'll be pretty sad about it. We're done here for now. See you next time.